Hello! In this video, I'm going to go over using levels as layers. Uh, especially this is going to be focused for virtual production, but it's also really useful just simply for collaboration. So what do I mean by that? Well, about two years ago, there was a video made by Unreal. It was a live stream uh, with Grayson Edge, who's a senior cinematic artist at Epic. And he presented how he used different levels uh, and he organized his virtual production work in uh, different levels. And I thought that was really useful. And so I wanted to show how that's done. All right, so in the past I've used levels for level streaming where you can stream in assets and out in order to like optimize um, resources inside of engine. But in this case, it's just mostly for organization. So under window, then you go to levels, you can open up the levels. And then what I do is I create a persistent level, which is an empty level. It's just sort of a shell level. So you go file new, create an empty level. And then once that empty level is made, you can either add levels that you've already made. So you go to levels here and you can say add existing. And then that will go under the persistent level. Or you can just create new levels. You can just sort of create a new level with selected actors. So if you happen to have populated your level here, you can sort of pipe those assets into different levels. And how are they divided? We've got art area and art level and a Cinecam level with the camera assets. And also I've been doing a lot of recent work with LiDAR and it's really nice. You can scan an entire area and whether you're using it just for measurements or to lay out your track for where you're going to do a practical shoot with virtual production, you can then freeze the LiDAR so that you don't select it by accident and then build on top of it in Unreal or just lay out um, cameras. But it's also great just that you can hide the level of visibility. Okay, so that's nice. What else can you do with this? Well, the other thing that's great is that sometimes you want to be able to just select something in the camera. So if you go to the world outliner, you can actually filter by level, which is kind of nice. So under the view options, you can say show only in current level. And since we're on the cine camera level, only the cine camera assets show up. Ah, but I'm seeing one thing that also happens, which is sometimes you might be on a level and then you, you're like, oh, I need one more zucchini for my uh, road here. And you add it and then, but you're on the level. So if you double click, you that's the level you're working on. You'll see it, it sort of highlights blue. Except for in this case, right now, when I hide all the cameras, this is, there's an actual zucchini that should be in the art assets. So how do we fix that? Uh, you just select the asset in question and double click and right click and go to move selected asset to level. So now when we hide the cine camera, it goes, it's right in the right place. Okay, awesome. Um, what else? Okay, one other thing that's useful is that in the art asset area, um, you can create an empty actor. So just right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor. And I called that actor stage origin. And I put it at zero comma zero comma zero. And then I took all the assets in the level and I made them movable. So that's kind of important. Otherwise you won't be able to parent, but then you just select everything and just parent it under the stage origin. And what does that let you do? Well, sometimes when you're doing virtual production, you just need to move or nudge around uh, different, you know, your, your, your entire like art assets. So you might need to rotate it just a little bit in order to get it positioned for lights better, but that's a really useful workflow as well. All right. I guess the final thing that I was going to go over was sometimes when you're doing virtual production or maybe you're just collaborating, you still want to be able to test the level. Like you want to be able to hit play 
and spawn in and walk around. If that's the case, then you want to make sure that the uh, player start is in the persistent level. And also, so you just select that, you can right click, make sure that it, it moved to the persistent level, but it's already there, so uh, you don't need to move it. Uh, the other thing is you might need to adjust the persistent level uh, level blueprint. So uh, you can open up the level blueprint just as usual right here, uh, but you can also open the level blueprint here. Uh, we went over locking, but you can also save those current levels. You can change their color. I'm going to open up the level blueprint and you can load level stream by uh, name and you just put in here and here. So I'm not going to load in the LiDAR level and make it visible because I don't want that. But now when I hit play, you know, I'll just spawn in. And those were the elements that I wanted to show off. It's a really useful way to stay organized. And that'll wrap things up. We'll see you in the next video.